I'm just going to pray first. Is that good? Okay, before I start, I want to say this. <clears throat> this was really not an easy study because um, there was not much information about on the seven spirits of the Lord. Um, it's not an easy topic. Uh, there was not many of the theologians that didn't go into depth about the seven spirits of God. So there was not a lot of information available. But I felt this is what the Lord wanted me to do. <clears throat> and I also did it because I feel in the time that I'm now in, and especially for myself, and I'm not sure if it's for everybody, because we're all part of Ecclesia. <clears throat> and in the time that we are now, we need direction. And I felt like I do not know, I don't like to go where I don't know where I'm going. At least I have to know to work from something. And... Um, we, and I felt like I just need to push through this to be able to get to a place of uh, that I can work from to know um, where is my stability in Christ in this new season coming. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just going to bring some water. <clears throat> So I'm just going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead me in this and all of us. Because um, I feel like this is not just for me. Uh, the Lord might show you a platform today. Just by speaking this, God opens new revelation for each one from the platform that you can move on to hear from the Lord for this new season. As this is a really important season for us, the church. And I would say not church, Ecclesia, because that is what they focused on in, in those times. Um, so let's just pray. Father, just come before you in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we just ask you to lead, to lead me tonight to say what you want me to say. And I know, Lord, that it's not something that we can plan <clears throat> the movement through your spirit. And we, we ask Holy Spirit to ignite the fire inside our spirit, man, to ignite the fire to not stop the movement as you move us closer to the destiny that Ecclesia is called into. Also for each one individually in the calling that they have to stand in Ecclesia so that we can unify in, in your body, Lord Jesus, to focus on the, the purpose for what you called us for in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> So I, my thesis is about igniting the fire. Um, and my thesis statement is um, igniting the fire in Ecclesia in total surrender and submission under the authority and full power of the seven spirits of God. So what does the word, what do these words mean to us, the Ecclesia? And that was my question. What does this mean for me and for Ecclesia today? Um, is it to take up the full responsibility of the calling that God puts on the church, or let's say Ecclesia today, not the church, Ecclesia today? For me, for all of us, or on how responsible are we as the Ecclesia today towards this calling? How much... Do we take up this responsibility individually as in unification, as a body? Where do we stand with this uh, calling? Are we prepared for these times and seasons? And this, those were the, uh, the questions I was asking the Lord um, to move on to this point. And this I focused on hearing from the Holy Spirit. So it was totally hearing from the Holy Spirit to tell me and download this to me to be able to move from. Um, from this foundation. Um, so the scripture that I have with this is that Isaiah 11, 22, uh, Isaiah 11, 2 says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, and the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So according to the prophet Isaiah, the scripture According to this, the prophet Isaiah scripture, it's the prophecy that he prophesied the coming of Christ, which means that he prophesied that there will come a new covenant, covenant which Christ will fulfill. And the one that will seal this covenant is the Holy Spirit. Because we know 
that um, the spirit of the Lord, according to this, this scripture, the spirit of the Lord is one of the spirits of the Holy Spirit. It's one of the spirits. Okay, so um, Jesus' coming was prophesied and speak into existence by this prophet Isaiah in those times, which means that heaven, or heaven already aligned up with the calling of Christ, so everything lined up for the exact time that the Christ will come back. So at that moment, when the prophecy becomes into fulfilling, it means like when the prophecy was spoken, the movement of the words, already the Holy Spirit was lining up. He lined up heavens, he lined up everything that's, that's universal into the, the coming of Christ. So the preparation was already there for the church and the beginning of everything as the Holy Spirit put it together. So, because Christ was the new covenant, and, um, and it says according to Ephesians 4, 28, 32, that the Holy Spirit seals us the moment that this prophecy come into fulfillment in our own lives of Christ. When you accept Christ, you also uh, accept uh, the seal of the Holy Spirit, where God seals us. Jesus functioned in the full, in the fullness of the seven spirits of the Lord. And one of the functions of the ministry of the seven spirits of the Lord is the spirit of the Lord. So Jesus was the sacrifice um, in the new covenant, which was with blood. According to this law of God, blood was the sacrifice which was acceptable for the forgiveness of sin according to Hebrew 9.22 and which was sealed, this sacrifice of fulfillment of this prophecy where Christ came was sealed by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit seals us the moment we accept Jesus. Jesus, the only way to enter the kingdom of God, which is set in heaven. There's no other way to enter the kingdom of God except for Jesus Christ. And this brings us to the foundation of truth. This is the truth from where everything flows out. If you do not have that true foundations, nothing can move on. And the movement of the Holy Spirit moves from this truth. The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you activate the move of the Holy Spirit. And so the movement of the Holy Spirit, so when you Keep on um, moving in your spirit. The Holy Spirit goes with you and the fire inside of you are ignited. It starts with a small fire inside of your spirit man, which are ignited. It's almost like um, a small fire that keeps on moving. It's like a seed, the seed of faith. And this faith tree and the seed becomes a, a huge tree which means that it's just growing. It's a continual growing. But with that, you need movement. You need to come to a place of moving into that position to be in the right position and line yourself up with your calling. So there's certain things you, uh, you cannot uh, tune into a human reasoning and understanding of this. this. This cannot be reasoned out. It's a supernatural uh, movement of the Holy Spirit, but it only are ignited by you moving and keep on moving in that direction. For instance, um, this small seed of faith can move mountains, which means that you can move from A to B with situations. And, and because the Holy Spirit is the one that's activated and move you to that place. But um, I just lost that now. But anyway, so um, I just want to get back to that point. So you, keep, you have to keep on moving. Oh, so prayer. Prayer is one of the things that keeps you moving because the eyes of the Lord are constantly looking for the one that's seeking God. So if you in your prayer or in a situation where you want and your spirit, you are actually asking God out of your heart to, to, to really be part of what God wants you to do. It shouldn't be something that it's, and that's why you come to this foundation of truth. When you come to this foundation of truth, knowing that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, that Christ is the only way um, to enter the kingdom of God, it brings you to this truth. Okay, so from this foundation or platform of truth, you move on. The first one is that 
This is the foundation of all truth. The second one is the truth to the world. Are we truthful to the world? Are we truthful to people around us? Are you truthful to yourself? So this is things that you need to ask yourself before you can move on. You need to come to this place of truth. Truth in the Lord. Where are you standing with the Lord? Are you in the place to be ready and activated by the Spirit? Because you can, you can have a mindset of thinking you are, but, but your heart is not in the right place. And that is the place where David meet God, is in this place of truth. He was truthful and he said, God, um, you uh, said that the Lord should just, uh, I don't know what's the English word, but the Lord says, just, um, what's the word? Just to, to, to see if your line of his heart is lining up with what God is saying. Um, so it's also true for ourselves. So from this place, the Holy Spirit's the one that moves. It's about God's truth and Christ's truth in our lives. It is not how much knowledge we have, but how or what we accomplish, not our own truth, but what do we do for Christ? So it's also a place of what are we doing for Christ? Is it about ourselves? So this is just a place of record, kind of like seeing yourself and, and knowing what is the truth in your life. Um, I get to this, I'm, I'm talking about this because for myself, I always have to move from this platform knowing, am I in the right direction? Is it God's truth or Clarine's truth? Is it your own truth that you have in your mind? Because we have a lot of knowledge. We have the whole Bible as knowledge. But so does Satan also. He knows the word of God. And so does the rest of us. So does a theologian knows the word of God. I've seen Kuzan, in Kuzan's Bible school, I saw people preach without the word of God. They didn't need the word of God. They could preach. And that was one challenge I had to Kuzan as well. I, I, one time I challenged him. I said to him, are you sure you're not functioning in religion? You have to make sure. And he was really angry with me. But this is the place of truth. Are we functioning in religion? Are we uh, just by hate knowledge? Or are we functioning from the heart and the spirit of the Lord? Because from that place, everything flows. The movement of the Holy Spirit Spirit flows because he wants you to uh, lead you to, into the place of your calling. So this is how much truth do you have of Christ in your life to move from that, that, that gives the Holy Spirit a seed to move with. And you need to come to this and, and see for yourself. If a man cannot humble himself or herself, how can you accept the sacrifice of the son dying on the cross? So when a person comes to Jesus, even in salvation, even for ourselves, we need to humble ourselves to come to this place of patience and humbleness. Because a per person or if I am not humble enough to accept Jesus Christ, how will I enter the kingdom of God? Because the son, um, um, yeah, when a person does not accept the extended hand of grace from God, he's rejecting the spirit of life and of grace. So the moment you are not accepting Jesus Christ as your savior or in a situation where the Lord wants to give something to you, you are actually um, rejecting the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm talking about somebody that comes to salvation. You're rejecting the spirit as well as uh, the, the hand of grace that God gives, which is, which is also called the spirit of life, the Holy Spirit. The spirit of the Lord is life-giving, a life-giving source that, in, source that imparts Christ into our life by regenerating our spirit into new birth. We all understand that, um, which leads to a total transformation. And that ignites the power and the fire inside our spirit. The Holy Spirit from salvation brings us to a place where he purifies the believer from all carnal ways so that we are clothed in Christ. 
I've become like gold going through a furnace. So seven times through the furnace means something that you will be purified by the Lord. You will be tested by the Lord. And I do have scriptures on what I'm saying now. You will be purified. You will be tested um, to get you ready to the place where you have to move um, on a mountain of God. So I'm going to talk about the mountain of God, the mount of the Lord is um, Symbolically, the Lord showed me the Mount of Transfiguration is, is, is kind of like a, pro, it's a process where, uh, where you are made that Jesus is the door at the foot of the Mount. So he provides that door so that you can be able to move up the Mount in the, with the, in the Holy Spirit, which is the one that trains and equips you, making you ready, purifying you, sanctifying you to get to the top of the Mount. And the top of the mount is also called the Mount of Zion, where, where God dwells and gives you his, his law in your heart. By moving up the mount, I just want to get my, just to read some of the things I've said here. Um, so going up the mount, it takes you to a place of holiness. The one that opens the door is Christ. And he's the one that takes you up with the walk with Christ that you have. His teachings, he's training you and equipping you and making way through the Holy Spirit to get to this place. When you reach the top of the mount, um, when Jesus went up the mount, he fulfilled the prophecy because he met Elijah and he met with uh, Elijah the prophet as well as Moses, which represents the law. When Christ came up the mount, we were in that place with the Lord. He fulfilled the prophecy when he went up. He fulfilled the prophecy of his calling as well as the, the, uh, the law because he became the law. He fulfilled that prophecy and he's become the law and the covenant for us. The law of the spirit. So you lose... Um, let me just... Where the Lord and David asked, Lord, who might dwell on your mountain? And I think it's that's in Psalm 15. I'm not sure when it's in Psalm 15 where it says, right, So Christ, when Christ moved up the mountain, but the only thing that Christ didn't fulfill when he was on the mount was crucifixion. He still had to be crucified. That was the last. That's why I said um, he still needed to... Uh, they shouldn't speak about it. it was not time for him because he still had to go through the process of course he just had to go through crucifixion as well but he took three disciples up the mountain it was james peter and and john and by going taking them up of up the mountain they actually uh, started to open their eyes started to glimpse because it's kind of like a vision they had they could see christ in heaven and God opened at that moment, as they go off with Jesus, they saw Christ. Because just at the same time, when they were on the mountain, is where Peter was fulfilling the calling that God had for him. Peter, on you the rock, I will build my church. So when he, just after that, the Jesus was asking him, um, Peter, who do you say I am? And he said, you are a son of God. This is only by revelation that God reveals to you, you can say, I am the son of God, which means that certain places in your life you come, God, can reveal, God reveals things to you. Man cannot reveal this to you. You have to climb the mountain with the Lord in the place of revelatory um, experience. It means that you need to experience the Lord. And it can also be divine appointments. Some people come to Jesus by Jesus appearing to them. Some come by a situation that happens in your life, but there always is a place of meeting with the Lord. And you can only do that if you spend time with the Lord. The more time you spend with the Lord, the more you are transformed. The more the Lord is, uh, you becoming kind of entwined with the spirit and you don't even know you, you just become who God wants you to be fulfilling your calling. When you move up the mount and come to the place of, of on the top of the mount of the Lord in holiness, you are actually uh, moving into your prophecy of fulfilling your calling. And that is where God downloads his laws in your heart. And you become the priest according to um, 
as Christ called you in your ministry or in the church to, to move from, where you are also standing in the gap for other people and praying for them and um, fulfilling what the prophecy that the Lord has for you. When Peter went up the mountain, um, his eyes were actually enlightened and his, uh, his eyes were enlightened and he's, he, he started to uh, see through the eyes of Jesus. And he, wa he was not blinded anymore by man's ambitions or opinions or any thought that man had. He was only seeing heaven. And that's where the apostles in this place of holiness, where the apostles function from. So when that door opened for them, that's why they would die for Christ, for the calling of sharing the gospel. Because they saw something and their spirit understands something that's beyond the measure of what man can measure the kingdom of God. And when we come to this place, everything falls away. You only see the kingdom of heaven and the function and how important it is, the calling to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Then your heart will understand and your mind will line up. Your heart will line up and, and everything in your body will line up with the calling of the saints in Christ Jesus, Ecclesia. And that is where the place where the bride will move to. According to prophecy, the bride will move to that place. It's not going to be stopped. It's a movement of God through the Spirit. Okay, I see that. Only on this mountain, the truth of the kingdom are truly revealed. Even if we have the glimpse glimpses of the kingdom, the truth is revealed. Our spiritual eyes is then opened and our minds can see. When Jesus spoke to Peter and said to him, Peter, I will build Ecclesia on you, the rock. He activated the movement of Ecclesia into, and he spoke Ecclesia into existence. He spoke the total Ecclesia into existence, everything lined up and making ready for the process of Ecclesia to be born. So when Jesus spoke to Peter and said to you, Peter, I will build my Ecclesia, he activated the movement of the Holy Spirit. The moment Jesus speaks, it activates the movement of the Holy Spirit. When a prophecy is being prophesied, it activates the movement of the Spirit. The seven spirits of God. And so the seven spirits of God started to move in all the heavens and everything around to put everything in, in place. And aligning earth, aligning heaven for the calling of Ecclesia, the birth. So this small flame in Peter becomes... Um, something that is ignited in his spirit man. He didn't stop. Even though he, um, he went through situations where he fell, he stood up again and he moved on because the spirit was just inside of him igniting the fire. John 21, 15, 17, um, and John 21, 15 to 17, Jesus was asking uh, Peter three times, do you love me? And he said to him, Peter said, yes, I do love you, Lord. And he says, feed my sheep. And then he said again, take care. Uh, he asked him again, Peter, do you love me? He says, take care of my sheep. Again, he said, um, and the third time, feed my, my sheep. And by this time, Peter was like, really, why do you ask me, Lord? But actually, before Christ went, he was asking Peter, Ecclesia, because Peter represents Ecclesia. Ecclesia, look after my sheep. Do not let them fall away. Do care for them. Look after them. Feed them. And that's why I feel like um, we as Ecclesia should extend the hand of grace to the fallen Ecclesia. We should not let them go. Because the Lord will equip us through the, 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 the full power of the Holy Spirit, the seven spirit of God. The Lord is equipping his church for this time. He is releasing 
uh, the full power of the Holy Spirit, through the seven spirit of the Lord, the full power of the Holy Spirit is released on the church. You will, you will overcome and you will succeed through the seven spirits of, the, the seven spirits of God. Even though Ecclesia, even though um, the church are degrading, and I know talking about religious churches as well, you can overcome by the seven spirits of the Lord. And you can move to the place in this place where you are, um, that where you may guard your stronghold and the one that leads you. So we can rise above this situation if you move to this place of, of being with the Lord on the mount. And, and from there on function in his, in his calling, what he calls you for. So Christ calls in this, in, in this way he was talking to, um, this scripture that he was talking to Peter, he was actually telling Peter, don't let go of, of the fallen Ecclesia. Look after them. Because he knew that man, um, man have, have the, fall, have the um, sinful nature, he knew about this. And, but he was asking Peter, if you love me, don't let go. This is, this is my Ecclesia. Bring them back. Extend your hand of grace as I've extended my hand of grace to you. When David had opportunity to, um, to kill Saul, he didn't do it. He extended the hand of grace to Saul. He, he did choose not to do that. And he actually wanted to see Paul restored. Oh, I'm sorry. He actually wanted Saul to be restored. So he wasn't, he didn't want the kingship for himself. That was not his purpose. He wanted to see that, that Saul has been restored, but he wasn't. So he was really sad when Saul died. The father is waiting for his lost sons and daughters. And we all know that um, the story about where the lost son, the prodigal son and where the two sons, the one went away and he wanted to find everything in life and the worldly riches and everything. And eventually he came back. But this is the same that we Ecclesia have to open our hearts for them that comes back. We have to extend that hand of grace to them. Even if, they are, even if the Ecclesia is broken and fallen, we need to be that, that place of, um, to, to help them and, and to restore them. So one of this, uh, the spirit of, of the Lord is one of this uh, seven spirits of the Holy Spirit, seven spirits of God. And one spirit of, the, of God is the spirit of wisdom. According to Proverbs 9, 1, wisdom have built their house on seven pillars, which is a symbolic meaning um, of the fullness of God's wisdom. Ecclesia should build on, that, on this wisdom of God. Christ is the representation of this wisdom, not from this world. So Christ is the outcome of God's wisdom. If we accept Christ, we accept God's wisdom beyond measure. So you can't measure this wisdom if you accept Christ Jesus. So um, one thing that we as Ecclesia, uh, things that we should look um, out for is that don't become settled in your spiritual lives. 
Don't keep com become set in stuck in your ways. Um, embrace, uh, embrace, um, embrace change and be always open for change because the Holy Spirit specializes in the unconventional as Jesus was. Jesus take uh, mud and he mixed mud with uh, spit and he put it on people's eyes. If we are focusing to be in a conventional line as we are taught in, 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 in our traditions and human way of reasoning, we're not gonna find that place where God is moving. You need to be open and embrace the, 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 the different, um, the unexpected of God. The Holy Spirit specializes in what he sees, not what man sees. So we also have to come to the place of surrender. The apostle choose to surrender everything because they, they climbed the mountain with God. So they lived on this mount of God and they choose to surrender because they saw things beyond what we, uh, we, what we can understand now. We need to be renewed in our spirit and, and our eyes being totally enlightened to come to this place of understanding. Each one have to come to this place for himself or herself. But in total, the ecclesia is one. It's a living organism we as an ecclesia are a living organism it's continual moving and growing and so it never stops it's it's never ending because god is never ending this is just the beginning no beginning there's a beginning we don't even know where god is beginning but the beginning and the end there's nothing it's just the old crisis i'm the alpha and the omega there's no there's no there's the beginning but never ending for what who god is and so the three spirit, and so the Holy Spirit, seven spirits of God is moving. So the, Holy, the apostles came to this place where they totally surrender and give to the Lord. They come to this place where they knew they will go through trials and tribulations. Even Paul knew that he's going to die. The Holy Spirit revealed that to him, that he will die. But he still choose to follow the Lord. He chose to share the gospel to the world because he knew he'd been in this place to understand and being uh, in, entwined and connected with Jesus' heart. He had the heart of Christ in him to understand that the world that does not have, um, the, that doesn't have Jesus doesn't have life because they have there's no existence of life after this. Paul even says that I be, we as the apostles are a spectacle to the world. We are like a circus to the world. Everybody thinks that we are lost it, but that, that was the case because they were prepared to do that, to be able to share the gospel. And I think this is the place of surrender, that you do not care about yourself anymore. But as long as you share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world out there, they will go through these trials and tribulations for the sake of the gospel. And so, and make God the stronghold and the refuge in their lives. Don't, and the one thing that I found is that don't be, uh, we as the Christia should not be blinded by the giants in the world. We shouldn't be blind by these giants of tradition that follows us around, that in every nation there's traditions, that we have to let go of traditions that does not line up with the word of God. Culture differences, we have to let go of that. It's not part of, um, in some ways, when culture embraces the things of God, yes, but some things we need to let go because it can hinder us. We have to let go of the religious ways of thinking, education, politics. If this is interfering with the move of the Holy Spirit, which can hinder the Holy work of the Holy Spirit, we have to let go of that. Make sure if God tells you to move in that area, that this is what your calling is.
evil will always be in the world. The wheat and the wheat grows up together. I just want to say about the wheat. Um, I was saying that in Kamait, like, mom, wheat, the wheats. Just make sure it's not wheat. <laughs> so the wheats and the wheat will always grow up together. Ecclesia will always be persecuted, but never a victim, always the light. There will always be persecution for Ecclesia, but we will always be the light. We will not be a, a victim. Because we have the power of the seven spirits of the Lord. We as the Ecclesia need to renew our minds, even for us to function in unity. We have to move from the platform of unity in our minds and renew our minds around that this is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do, to function as a unified Ecclesia. The world is not kind. The world is not kind, cannot love and do not owe the, the ecclesia, the church, nothing. Just if you understand this, you will understand that you will not find the love in the world. The love of things, the love of people, you need to come to this place where you have this love relationship with Christ. We are not from this world. So we are not part of this world. Be from another world. Push the walls out and see a broader vision. Push your world out. See a broader vision. See Ecclesia and see the world. Because we are this time that's about global. The global calling of Ecclesia for the move of the, of the harvest that is great harvest that is coming. Renew your mind and prepare you for this great harvest coming. Focus on revival and, 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 and the movement of the Holy Spirit that ignites the seven spirits of God that wants to ignite you from within. CB, so when you push these walls out to have a broader vision, Don't get caught up in the world's problems around you. Do not let situations and problems become the walls that quench the fire and restrict, restrict what the Lord is doing. Don't let those walls quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. And again, Jesus specialized in the unconventional. Even when, the, even when the disciples were plucking corn on the Sabbath, everybody was thinking they lost it. But they didn't because Jesus was already there for them. Ignite the fire and submit under the authority and full power of the Holy Spirit. We are overcomers. And we overcome through the seven spirits of the Lord. I'm done, Nancy. Oh, will you pray for us? How many? You're muted. Pray for us. Father, we've come before, humble before you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're the one that come to save us, to save the world, Lord. Ignite the fire in us, Lord Jesus, to move beyond what we are thinking, Lord. In a world that you created there for us to move in, Lord, to know that your kingdom is functioning. Let us be part of your plan, Lord Jesus, for the great harvest that is coming, for bringing revival in people's hearts, bringing revival to Ecclesia. Be part of this plan of you, Jesus, to ignite. And put this world on fire, Jesus, so that we can move and function in your full power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, my gosh. And I know you have so much more. I know you could have, you could have actually go for a month on this topic. It's awesome. But um, I've got some questions for you, and I know everybody else did. Um, 
you know, I look at Ecclesia as a noun and a function, um, you know, as they have the, uh, you know, it's what they do, but it's also who they are. But you were talking about two, I got two things. First of all, the broken Ecclesia, what do you see about the broken Ecclesia, Ecclesia and how do you see that? Number one, number two, the seven spirits of God, you kept saying that we could overcome by that. What does that mean to you? How do we overcome with, through the seven spirits of God? Okay, Nancy, the first question again. <laughs> okay, so broken Ecclesia. By the broken Ecclesia, um, I think that many of them, many of us, there are some of us that lost our way along the way, being caught up in situations that is around us. And it's so easy to do get caught up and entangled by, by the situation, which means um, the word of God says that nobody is above not falling. So if we say that we are above falling, we are not walking in truth. So we need to make sure that we are not in, the in, in a place of thinking more of ourselves than we are. Because many times, this is the, the place of being humble and move from humbleness. If we are not humble enough, we can't accept Christ. That's the place of salvation. People have to come to that brokenness and that place of understanding that they are nothing and, and that God is more than themselves. It's, not, it's, it's a place of knowing I have to surrender my life. I can't try to control everything around me, my problems, my situations. And with Ecclesia, it's the same. We just need to know that um, it's a dangerous place to be in as well. So do you, do you feel like then you're, you're saying Ecclesia, you're using it as an individual, but also corporately when it's the right. broken, broken. So corporately we're broken, individually we're broken. I don't know if we all are broken, Nancy. I believe that there are forefronters. There's people that's really walking from this place of being uh, on the mountain with God. But we also need to know that you can't just get people um, as people come in for Jesus, they are loaded up the wagon in front. But just as they load it up, some are falling off the back. So what are we doing here? I mean, how are we, um, how, how, how is this an organism that is healing and restored? Is it, is it us, the, the Ecclesia, that needs to also lead people in healing and restoration? Or are we just part of, because this is part of who Jesus is. Amen. And then the seven spirits of God. I know other people have questions too. I don't want to take up all the time, but what um, the seven spirits of God, you said, um, how do we overcome with the seven spirits of God? Anybody else have that question? How do you overcome with the seven spirits of God? Um, I don't understand the question. Uh, totally. You you said you said um, we must overcome with the seven spirits of God because I was right. I was typing when you were and writing stuff down whenever you were talking, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. How do you overcome with the seven spirits of God? What does that okay, mean? So we need to come to to this place. We need the same power that was in the in in the New Testament where the apostles function in, which means that they they came to this place where they lived in holiness before the Lord. It's a higher standard and calling. You need to keep up that standard that God is putting down. And I do believe he's going to raise up the standard. You can't lower the standard for people to walk in. And so I think it might gonna cause some, it can also cause some, I wouldn't say eruption sometimes, because to keep that standard, it's not an easy place to be in. But you can't lower that standard. Otherwise, you're not on the mountain as well. You have to function from a place where, um, where you will walk in holiness before the Lord. To function in the seven, the seven spirits of the Lord. Woo, that's a mouthful. So the prayer is, Lord, help us. Amen. Because we are not in that place yet. Not, some of Ecclesia are, but some not. Lord help. I want to open the question. Jesus, it's possible, Nancy. Do what now? For Jesus, it's possible. It's possible. Amen. Have grace and mercy. <sighs> help. That's awesome. That's okay. Okay, comments. I'm going to shut up. Comments. I know you guys have more comments than that and questions. So jump in there. Comments, questions, Wendy. That was so awesome. I cannot wait to read your paper. Um, I wanted to tell you that. Um, 
as you were doing this, I mean, I was like wishing that I could hit a pause button because you said so many awesome, powerful sentences. I mean, it could only be five words and it was so powerful. And, it, and then when you're done, the Lord was kind of show me, it kind of reminded me of like Bill Johnson. Like he would just say one sentence and then he could just leave the room and we could all just sit there and stir on it. You know what I mean? Of what you said. And so I know that it was the Holy Spirit speaking through you those sentences. So they were so powerful. So I wanted to thank you for that. Um, one of my questions was, um, I know uh, Rick Joyner wrote that book about going up the mountain and stuff like that. And that was years ago. I read that. But so if I wanted to um, spiritually see myself walk, going up that mountain, what, what would I do? I mean, I, I mean, I understand what, what Nancy just asked about the seven spirits and, and all that, but so if I wanted, to, I know Jesus is the door and he says the way and I've, he's the, you know, and so I'm already in there, but how do I continue to go up to get to there? What would you suggest to me or others to inspire us to really um, move up that mountain? I mean, go ahead. <laughs> Wendy, just spending a lot of time with the Lord. I think sometimes you have to wait on the Lord. I, we've been in a place in, um, uh, uh, where was it now? One of the countries. We had to wait before we could start our ministry. We had to wait seven months for God to put things in for place for us. So in that time, it's kind of like when you have to overcome yourself. With impatience, you have to start walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which it's, it's a mind thing. But when it starts to, to be a hard thing is when you go through that pressure when you're in this intimate place of God, it's like the pressure of, of is being like pressed under a press to get the oil out to ignite the fire in your spirit. It's a, it's, a, it's a place where you feel like, I cannot do it anymore, then you do it. Because this is the, the overcomer. It's when you overcome that human ability to move into this place of, of, of doing it. Because then the Holy Spirit takes over and he lets you go on. I've, there's one time I had uh, a person was, I remember, he's like my father in South Africa. And um, they let us know that he had to have a, a, a heart surgery. And um, I just remember that time. I couldn't sleep for three days. I'm, I literally couldn't sleep for three days, which is not normal. I mean, the spirit was dri driving me on to pray for him three days and three nights. After that three days when he was okay, the moment just before they told us, I felt my spirit like, oh, and Clarine is going. <laughs> and I just slept, but I couldn't sleep. And even if I tried to sleep 15 minutes, it didn't work because I was driven by the fire of the spirit just to keep on praying and pushing through. I want that. <laughs> Got a comment if you're done, Wendy? Yes, that was awesome. Jay, Wendy, are you done? Did you, something else? More? Yeah, um, great message. I think you got the uh, key scripture correct on uh, Isaiah 11 2. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. And it seems like as you went through your paper, I took a whole page of notes, that in every one of those positions, as you understand that you're going to travel along with Christ, you say it starts with prayer. Jesus is the door of the mountain. As we go up the mountain to the top of Zion, um, we have to rely and find that place in God where we're using the word, uh, spirit of wisdom, the understanding and the counsel. And like you just said, when you wait for seven months, that's like the spirit of might. It's like, mm -hmm. so very, very prophetic. And these are the kind of messages that are important for the church, but the people that are pressing in will get it. And those who are just coming for a sermon won't, you know, and so many of our churches, because if you want to get this, you have to embrace it. If you want to Amen. get this and hear it and go up that mountain, you have to listen. For those that have ears, let them hear. And you have to act on it. And it's great. And this is the kind of messages 
that inspire me. I could go and listen to this kind of stuff. Sometimes when I just get another Bible lesson at church, ouch, but uh, this is a very, very, very good message. And uh, yeah, I'd be looking forward to reading your paper. Thank you. It was good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to say something to, to Wendy. Um, you were asking me, how do you get to this place? I actually put myself in that position sometimes, Wendy. Um, the, when Kuzan went to Bible school, we had to pay a certain amount for three years and uh, four years. And I didn't know if we are doing the right thing. So I did this and I said, um, I'm not going to pay that school. And so those three years that he was studying, it was really hard years, Wendy. Sometimes it, we had little food in the house. But I felt like if the Lord wanted this, I need to make sure I'm in the right place. So we opened that door for God to fully provide for us. We didn't pay the school. And we, we gave away our money, actually, to, to missionaries. Because I felt like I'm putting my seed of faith out there. God, let it grow. So sometimes you come into this place of, okay, am I going to trust Lord or am I just going to not do it? And, and I know it's a, it sounds very risky, but I feel like you, you can sometimes put yourself in that position. I, I, I would be very careful when it comes to health because I found that there is people that sometimes stop drinking their medication, which is not a good thing if the Spirit of God did not tell you. But uh, when it comes to finances and and I know not everybody functions this way. Um, when we were in Belarus, the churches actually wanted to come, let us come back. But the Lord gave of it, so I think it's a, a, a choice that you are given because your spirit man will know this is a choice. You can choose either this or this. So it doesn't force you, the Holy Spirit, of doing the choice. So when we were in Belarus and the persecution started and they wanted to kill us and uh, this, I don't know, it was the mafia and the KGB the churches wanted to go, let us come back home. And I said to you, because I'm, I'm not going. Because if, if the Lord sees he's sending us, he's going to obviously look after us, which was a difficult choice. But he covered us with his hand that not even the, the KGB could find us. So they had to ask the one pastor that, took, uh, that brought us in, where were they hiding? Because I, we can't find him. For the KGB not to find somebody, it's like a miracle. And so this is, this is another situation. You, this, and I don't say do that. I'm just saying that there's always these choices that we make. When um, we lost our visas, uh, kind of we didn't lose our visas. We are banned from America for three years um, before we came back into America three years ago. Um, it, it was just they banned us so we didn't know if we come back so we we went and we present some of our papers they didn't look at it and when we came out and Kamai was actually crying because she never cries i was like okay something is wrong something is off and so then i said to kuzan something is wrong and the lawyer that was helping us phone Kuzan, he never does this. He said to Kuzan, this is not right. I'm going to force this and handle this. He never did that. I knew I had to start praying. And then the Lord said to me, fast 21 days to have the breakthrough. Because, there's, because there, is a, there is a spiritual force that is trying to withhold you to come back to America. And you have to break that hold. Like, and he showed me Daniel. First, I thought, okay, 15 days, I'm going to fast seven days. After seven days, the Spirit said, move on. Move on, press through. Till I came to 21 days. And on the 22nd day, the Holy Spirit said, stop fasting. But actually, Kamei went on fasting with me. She said, she fasted seven, 14 days without any asking her or anything. It was just a spiritual move. Pray day and night. I prayed day and night like, I've rested like an hour, and then I start praying and, and pushing this through. And the Lord says, push that out. Push that thing. And so the answer came and says, now you're all welcome back in America. What happened? He, God lifted that whole process. He put everything in place. So it was a process. I must say, when we, we got to the office of, of, of Homeland, of Home um, uh, embassy. American Embassy, we knew that, I was standing here praying and I was praying in tongues. I'm praying there and people were looking at me, thought I'm crazy. I thought, I don't care what they're thinking. I'm going to pray this through. Till we get to the front of the line 
and 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 I said, Kuzan, pray that woman, she mustn't be in the front because she there's something wrong with that man be there. Pray that woman in. So I prayed the woman in, and luckily for me, uh, the man took longer and the woman came up and the Lord says, This is your door. And then she took all our papers and she said, I'm gonna go through this thoroughly. And then after when she went through the papers, the Lord opened the door. And I don't know. Is it for me? Yes. I think it was for us to grow into trusting God for the supernatural. Just wanted to share that with Wendy. Powerful walk of faith up the mountain. Powerful. And it's, um, it's worth listening to again. And so we've recorded this, but plus you'll get to read her paper. We're going to post that. Um, you talked about surrender. Um, you know, as a part of that in the different parts that we have to go through. That all can be found in Hebrews 12, actual steps up the Mount Zion. But, but the whole faith journey, everything is the faith journey. So there's that whole part of being led of the Spirit. And certainly, Clarine, you guys, you and Kuzan are led of the Spirit. And certainly that opens up a door and that gives ear for where it needs to be. But that's, a, that's not the easy life, but that's what God's called you to. And I just thank God for you all. I thank God for your life. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Emma, go ahead. Oh, Donna, go ahead. And then uh, it's amazing to listen to these ladies. I can uh, these uh, the people, the class. It's uh, already like uh, is a book of generals. Uh, you guys, you are going to make history. Uh, listening to a lady like uh, uh, by this sister now. Uh, she's uh, imparting in the word of God and the life of God and Holy Spirit that she has already lived in the uh, in the natural, and uh, that um, as we have heard before, that what you overcome, He empowers you uh, to have strength to do uh, uh, to help other people. So uh, it's really amazing because you guys, to me, uh, to uh, I think is the. I hope it's spirit of God in me. You are like already generous. So please be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't stop. Keep on going. You are doing the right thing. You are on the right way. And uh, your lives are going to be used to change and make a difference. And we are going to bring that ecclesia that the Lord commissioned us to do from the beginning. God bless you, Donna. Thank you, Emily. Uh, just like with everyone else, it was just, it was powerful. And um, I always love how you are always praying for the fire. There's always more. There's always deepness. There, there's always a burning. There's always a, a fire, you know, just there's always a fire. And, and I, I really appreciate hearing that about, you know, just the fire of God. And But, but also, I was going to ask you, besides the Holy Spirit, was there any uh, books or any author or any resource that you found that would help us if we wanted to learn more about the seven mountains of God or, or things like that because it's, it's kind of gotten the, the wheels turning. <laughs> um, Emily, I didn't find a lot, but I do find this one guy, Ron Kangas, and I know he's, he's a very popular guy as well. He's not, he's not popular. I mean, he's not popular, but he uh, he is in ministry all over the world, yes. It was actually a miracle I got this golden nugget. After I spoke with Nancy that day, and she said, okay, I said, okay, Nancy, I'll go research more. I found him just the first time I opened my computer and I started to research, I found him. And I felt that I was led by the spirit to find this guy because he's kind of lined up what I'm saying. Because I already wrote my paper and then I found him and put him in there. There was just, I think there was a few things that I, uh, yeah, I think that that was, he was confirming what I was saying, and I was really happy about it, Nancy. Um, you know what? I, actually, I looked at your stuff, and I, re I opened that up, and I read his entire, like, uh, was it 40 pages? I don't know what it was. It was some big, large article. Yeah, he, it looked like a dissertation that he had written. Um, but, and I didn't read it before. The time. I didn't know about this guy. Yeah. I didn't. I can say that. 
So, so, his, um, so anyway, there's an article. She actually posted the article. I mean, she actually referred to the article in her paper. Um, and I, it, it, it's, a, it's online. It's a PDF that he did. And it's a big dissertation. It's not a book. But it was on the seven spirits of God, and it was very interesting. Uh, yeah, go ahead and spell his name, because I don't remember how to spell his name. Do you, Clarine? Okay, I'll hide his name. Um, but, but you also can find it in her paper as well. But it is worth the read. He does an extensive theological study, actually. Uh, he, yeah, he does very, um, it's a very theological. I had to skip some of that because, I, you know, you know some of it, uh, but I kept looking for what's he really, what's the bottom line, what's the point. So um, I just kept on going with it. <laughs> Clarine, what was Nancy doing up late at night? She was reading that article. <laughs> right, like me too. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Anyway, no, it was good. That's good. I was going to say that Paul Keith Davis years ago wrote some things about the seven spirits of God. And I didn't know if, if you had heard anything from him, Paul Keith. Okay. Do you know who Actually, I'm looking for fresh. So I wrote in my paper that we should glimpse into the past, but move into the future. But I believe that there is a new fresh revelation for these times we are moving in now. And we need to find that. And I do believe to go into the past and know about revivals and things happen. But we also need to wait for the unexpected move of God for the time and season. I, that's what, for me, it was important that these this people focus on, or um, theologians, the focus should be on deeper studies about the Holy Spirit. You actually mentioned that, Nancy, this guy, Ron Kansas. Yeah. They, the theologians didn't, doesn't go into depth about, that was so amazing. I was like, what did I read? Is this a prophecy? Is somebody bringing for me all this information that I was thinking about? Yeah, he, he, did, a, he did a very thorough job. But um, um, Etienne Blom, he's also from South Africa, really does a lot on the seven spirits. But you know what? Um, the thing that I keep finding is that... Um, that I keep, I, I was actually asking to uh, encounter them. And so as you pray to encounter them, then the Lord begins to give you revelation on how to encounter them. It's, it's like sometimes when I'm counseling, I wondered why might went with counsel, but I, when I counsel, I really do need might uh, to be able to speak. And so then I, I realized, oh my gosh, I need might. And when might shows up, I have the, I have this, um, Holy Ghost boldness and courage and strength to carry through firm counseling. And so I began to ask the Lord, I'd like to, you know, Holy Spirit, I'd like to engage with the seven spirits and how do I engage with them? And so, you know, enlighten our eyes with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in Ephesians 1. And so begin to, you know, the enlightenment of the heart to understand what is your, um, uh, what is your inheritance with the saints and your destiny and calling? And so then you begin to meditate on that, begin to welcome them and begin to encounter them. And mm -hmm. I don't know, I kind of think of, think of it like it's, it's, we maybe will get different revelations, different ones. And I think people have been careful not to quantify or write too much about it because I think we're to encounter it. Right. We do. We do have to uh, experience the move of the Holy spirit and, um, through this experience, it opened the door to um, to let the Holy Spirit's movement come through in our lives. Yeah. yeah one, one aspect that uh, Huzan was just mentioning here now is that I wrote also about the fear of the Lord. You need that one of the signs of Ecclesia is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is on him like a mantle, which means that they will move in humbleness. And I know I had an encounter with, the God, with God. That's why I have the fear. I, I actually grew up in the fear of the Lord, which is hard. Mm -hmm. For me, I didn't understand. Um, I couldn't, it was hard for me to come uh, to see how people say, yeah, but, but Jesus is, but God is love. I didn't understand that aspect. I knew I respected God and I loved God, but in a different way. Because I had this encounter um, with God it actually makes me feel like uh, it, it just makes my, my, my spirit feel stand still. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some place where, where they, the people was lying before God and didn't move. I felt the same. I felt I'm going to die. And she didn't move now. 
But I've learned to be in that place when it happens with me. Um, the Holy Spirit told me once, don't promise anything to God when you are in this place. And I'm like, okay, no. So I've learned in this place how to encounter, you know, I'm in this, this place with the Lord and it's, it's downloading or saying something to me not to move. Even if I say something that is totally out of line, I feel it comes up. I feel this, it grips my spirit that I am moving on a wrong platform now. I shouldn't say what I should and I and confess my sins immediately if I've been in the wrong with something. So there is this, the fear of the Lord that's, and some people, um, the fear of the Lord is not, I, I'm talking about experience now, there's more, but uh, David says, I'll teach you, I'll come to this, I'll teach you about the fear of the Lord. So it's, it's teachable too. But um, I think it's a lot about experience in a place where you come with the Lord. And, um, well, you could write a whole book. I mean, actually, there's each one of these things is a huge topic. You know, it really is. Hey, Elaine, how are you doing? We're going long. The class is supposed to be over now. We're just starting. We don't. We're, we're all. We're just almost done with our first. Our first speaker. We have two more speakers yet. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> um, I just want to say something about the fear of the Lord. It also makes you not to overstep your boundaries. When the Holy Spirit have. Uh, um, like you, in the Holy Spirit helps you to overcome something. Don't move back into that. Right. This is where he says, stop. Don't move back into that place. This is where the Holy comes in. It reminds you and actually brings your spirit into line and say, attention, don't move back. It actually, it's also about Ananias and Sapphira. I think they were in this place of, of um, a standard. There was a standard for Ecclesia and they moved they think they lie to people, but they actually lie to God. So, because their accountability, the church, ecclesia, I mean, if you're not church, ecclesia's accountability is to the Lord, not to people. So you are accountable for the Lord. And remember that we have to remember that the seven spirits, the eyes of the seven spirits is moving all the time and looking and seeing. Amen. Amen. Um, there's that place of fear of the Lord, though, too, where um, when God shows up in a place that people get picked up and thrown across the room. I had an experience too, Nancy. So there's, I mean, we, it's not just, there's a reverential fear, and then there's the, oh my gosh, the train filled the temple. And that's like, where you have to say, back up, God, or I'm going to die. You know, like you just know that you're going to die if you don't, if he doesn't back up. So there's that. I mean, it, I think there's a lot, there's a large gamut of understanding about that too. I'm still learning, Nancy, and I think that... Uh, too. I, mean, I think we all are. I think. I'm, I'm so, I'm like, I want to be in this place of humble living. Because <laughs> really, it's, uh, yeah. It's, I, I just think, I, it's just... Um, I think uh, we will be ready for the time that, that the Lord is pre pre preparing his bride. There was a time that I remember when I was in one of these countries and, in, and everything happened. And I felt like, Lord, I'm not ready for this. And the Lord says, you will be in due time. Amen. Into that. We can trust him. Right. 